hurricane force winds, sub-zero temperatures, minimal oxygen. It's no wonder Everest has claimed the lives of over 200 people. It's a privilege to survive this long, I suppose. Yet the determination of the human spirit has driven a team of amateur climbers to challenge the highest mountain on Earth. Physiologically, we're not meant to be at this altitude, and things can go wrong. Novice Betsy Hulescamp has collapsed high on the mountain. She's been lying in the snow for the last 10, 15 minutes. And Everest is testing Tim Medvitz to his breaking point. Um, the sun was beating down on us so hard, and it was just killing me. It's judgment day. We're not sure that you can do it. As expedition leader, Russell Bryce decides who gets to go for the summit and who goes home. Put your crap on some backwards and you never climbed before. You have no business on the mountain whatsoever. Four and a half vertical miles above sea level, just below the death zone, 11 climbers are fighting for their place on the summit team. They've been given five hours to climb from North Call Camp 1 to High Camp 2 at a lung-busting 24 and a half thousand feet. For LA journalist Betsy Hulescamp, this is the highest she's ever been. I dream big, I go out and I try things that are very difficult. You have a dream, you have a vision, you can see yourself on top of the mountain. Sheer determination has gotten her this far. But now, her lack of experience is having serious consequences. She's burnt her face in the intense sun. She's not drinking enough water, and she's close to exhaustion. I'm trying my best and doing my best. What more can you do? The grinding climb in thin air has brought her to a standstill. There's just no air, and without air, your brain doesn't work. And after four and a half hours of climbing, Betsy is less than halfway to camp two. Higher up the slope, Guide Dean has spotted she's in trouble. Uh, Woody, Woody from Dean, copy. Betsy hasn't moved for a long time. Yeah, Woody. I've been sitting in the snow for about the last three quarters of an hour watching Betsy. Um, she's about 100 meters below me, not, probably only halfway up the slope. Dean decides the situation is becoming critical. I'm going to have to descend. She's been lying in the snow for the last 10, 15 minutes, so I don't know what. I've got to go down and check it out. As Dean reaches Betsy, she still hasn't moved. I just can't breathe going up here. I just feel like I'm going to pass out. When you feel like you want to lie down in the snow, yes, I'm just it's not a good over. sign. In the thin air, Betsy's heart and lungs are struggling to fuel her body and brain. She's experiencing the symptoms of hypoxia. If you're very severely hypoxic, you'll be very unwell. People's judgment begins to get affected. Maybe sit down, act drowsy, or will progress to inactivity, confusion, slurred speech, coma. Dean must convince Betsy to go down before it's too late. 